Hi parents, I'm Michael Enda. I'm your child's health and phys ed teacher for the 2020-21 school year. I'd like to spend a few minutes with you talking about my program, um, what to expect through the year, maybe a little explanation about like um, remote learning from my point of view, and uh, some things that hopefully like will be part of lessons online when we're remote and when we get back to school will also be part of it. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about goals and some of the new things like in um, the curriculum that the school is doing and what my part is in some of those. So let me start off by saying how much I appreciate my job. I really enjoy what I do. It doesn't feel like work. I don't wake up ever and feel like, oh, I got to go do this today. I really do like what I do. I enjoy it. It's, um, I like the creativity. I like the ideas I can have. I like the ways I can present the topics that I have. And I look at it as a great responsibility. Like I'm responsible for helping these children who show up as kindergartners and they leave as like, you know, teenagers. And I have help. I, I help them. I find ways to get involved with their lives to make them participate in class fairly. And again, I'll talk about more of that later. The easiest way to contact me is through email. Um, I can be. I can usually get back to people within the same day. It's not too too difficult. Um, after school is always going to be better for me than during the school day. During the school day, I think our, our schedules are probably similar. Like I have kids at home. My children come to school during second and fourth grade. I have the same problems you have. And I'll talk about a little bit like um, things that I've noticed that some students do, maybe some families do, and have worked even for my own kids as I get into the message. I'll talk about how they're part of the class. All right. So in my class, the goal of remote learning is engagement. I want the students engaged in the lesson. It is so easy right now, and I felt myself getting bored with it. And the reason I was getting bored with remote learning is because I wasn't getting positive feedback from the students. So I had this one day where I it was raining, it was drizzling. This is where I teach class right here, right outside in my backyard. Um, you know, sometimes I go over, I have mud over there. Sometimes I go over there. Um, I have a whole nother thing coming from a whole nother section of the yard. But I like to be outside. I like the way it makes me feel. I like to be out here. I like the air. My kids like it out here. So they come out and join me during the day. And they have to be quiet and wear headphones. But at, like you guys at home, we probably all just have to find a way to make some things work. So I wasn't getting any feedback from the kids. I go inside, it's even worse because now my kids are in there. Right? I hear them and I'm competing. And my wife's talking to them and they need snacks and they need water. And it's probably a situation you're familiar with. I came back outside as soon as I could. It was done raining, but I got down into planks, which I'm doing with a lot of the classes. And I, when I got up, the whole class was laughing. And I was like, oh my God, that's so unique. What, how are these kids laughing? What is so funny? And I didn't realize I had mud all over the front of me because right where I take class, I'm going to show you, but you can't see it tonight. I have, I wore out a dirt spot, like the grass is dead. I wore a spot. And when I did the planks, my whole front was covered. And I thought to myself, wow, that was like really unique. Like all the kids were paying attention, laughing, and they were having fun. I'm going to do more of that. And that was the whole idea of the lesson. I literally did not change the content of the lesson whatsoever. I kept doing teaching very, very similar lessons, but I let them know that there was a reason they wanted to stay engaged for the end of the lesson. What I explained to them, which made the, listen, the lesson much differently, and this is kind of how like a lesson evolves. It starts as one idea, you get feedback, and it turns into something else. Well, in person, it's easy to see the feedback. It's easy to see what works and what doesn't work. Remote, it's much more difficult because you don't know because most of them are on mute. Hopefully, if they're under fifth grade, they're on mute all the time unless they have a question. But they... You know, they don't give you that instant feedback like with a smile that you can really clearly see that what you're doing is, is on the money or it's off. Like you just don't know sometimes. But I knew with this mud that I could do something unique and what the lesson turned into, the same exact lesson. And this is what the activity was. It was just, you might be familiar with, like I do water bottles. Um, this was what I started with. And you do, do like, right, like a side raise with it, whatever, uh, bicep curls. And the goal was that they would have to, depending on the grade, all right, to give you an idea, like younger kids, I would name the muscle and they would have to point to it. Older kids, I might ask them to name the muscle and change this a little by class by class and they might mix in things. But I went over deltoid, bicep, tricep. Uh, I mentioned trapezius and really do an exercise. Like I did uh, quads, calves. I think those are my five that were my goal. And then I mentioned other ones just like I did through the lesson, maybe that were part of the planks or something else. And then if you were to name them or locate them, I took a scoop of mud and I put them like, oh, oh bicep, that's right here. Uh, what's this? And they say tricep and I put mud there. And it was so popular. 
I really couldn't do that with the older grades because we would long since covered like basic muscles. But I knew I wanted to present the material to them where I dumped the mud on me somehow. But I didn't know how. So I started to think about what they needed, what was missing from our education time together. Like when I spent class with them, I'm with them for 45 minutes. What do they need? They need to be engaged. I think I have the idea. So what's the topic? And this is what we came away with for me teaching this lesson, starting with young kids, moving up. The big kids needed to try hard. They need to really sink in to what remote learning is. And even though it's not their favorite thing, maybe, and some of them would rather be in person, many teachers would rather be in person. I tried to really connect with them by saying, hey, you might have to try really hard to figure this out. You're going to have a moment where you don't feel like doing it. You don't want to do it, but you need to stay engaged. And I asked them at that moment if they would have a big try, like a really big try, like pull, reach out from deep inside of them, a bigger try than they've ever done before. And if they could do that, I was, I get, they had to do this. That was their signal that they could do it. That's all they had to do. All right. I scooped up mud and I put it on my face and then you can't see anybody and they're all laughing and they're coming off mute yelling things. And I pick up the hose and I, my face off and I'm there and I'm like, who has two big tries? I got another scoop of mud here. And then we start having this conversation about how important it is to just try hard to like, no matter what the circumstance is, no matter if you like it, you don't like it. If it's your least favorite thing, it's your most favorite thing. But if it has to get done, that you find a way to keep going forward and trying your best to reasonably achieve your goal. And that's kind of where we left that topic when I stopped doing that uh, mud lesson last week. And I really liked it because I think it connected to a need the kids had right now. That was kind of how that lesson just evolved from one little thing, getting a chuckle in a class into me really trying to convince kids that if they had this chance where they didn't think they could do it, if they could find a big try, they could find some way to try harder than ever before to see if they could stick with it. Like maybe the first thing that they would remember was me shoving mud on their face. And on that first step of that journey, they might get a chuckle thinking about me. And then maybe they would talk to me and I would say, Hey, did you do it? What did you do? How is it easy? What can I do to help you? Is there anything here? Did you talk to this? Whatever it is that I can do to help them. I'm willing to have office hours. Um, I mentioned after school is easy Wednesday. I have like literally like two hours. I could talk to anybody who needs help in that time. Let's see. I didn't really stick to my topics there. I have, um, let me mention like um, finding gross motor. So I try to, in person, I would always try to have something for like big motor skills, little motor skills, and maybe some other things like balance or some whatever. But right now for big motor skills, as I mentioned, those exercises, but for, for fine motor, for small muscles, we start doing magic tricks. And some kids have magic kits that they got for a birthday. Some kids might know a little magic trip. Some kids, and this is my personal favorite, it's my, one of my favorite moments of my career, goes, hey guys, look at me. She goes like this and she takes her camera off her dog's there and she's like, I turned myself into a dog and it was so funny and unique that it just made my day and it made me like, okay, well, I'm going to do magic tricks next period too because you never know what's going to happen. So there is a lot of, um, I don't know if it's spontaneity, if it's getting the feedback, if it's connecting with the kids, but there's something that's starting to happen that resembles a regular school experience for me with my classes. So uh, let me get into the goal. Oh, I have to mention SEL. SEL is social emotional learning. It's a goal of the school this year. Um, I was very honored by counselors. Um, they asked me to teach middle school, the first unit of SEL. And it was really something I was kind of had similar ideas to for this year. The thing that um, kids had told me last year at the end of the year that they needed, they needed feedback. They needed feedback from their teachers. They didn't have it in their lives. They didn't have like somebody Good job, bad job, yes. No, they didn't have somebody like pushing them along in the moment. So my personal like research when I heard that, I found this guy's name I can't say. Um, and he really talked about this idea of auto tell it goals. And really what it is is it's just the learner picking the goals themselves. And the reason that he thought this was a good idea or kept staying with the idea is because when the learner sets the goal themselves, they can give themselves feedback whether they're doing it right or they're doing it wrong. So if the goal is so internally important to them, to the learner, and they really want to do it, they can say, I'm doing it or I'm not doing it clearly to themselves. 
So that, that's like built into the topic of social emotional learning. Um, maybe not exactly equally or congruent, but these are like the same types of ideas that are in social emotional learning. Learning to manage things yourself, learning to take yourself and kind of deal with difficult situations you're with, try to find solutions. And I think the step that I really like of uh, the program we have second step is it teaches you to be fair to yourself, like how to have criticisms of yourself, but how to treat yourself fairly, like in an internal dialogue or the way you would think about a problem. I really like that aspect of it. So on that idea of goals, all right, so I can, you know, I can only tell you really what's worked for us. Um, my kids like nature, they like being outside. There's an app called Seek that you take a camera, you point at a plant, it tells you what it is. My dog is like a, a black hairy, like um, retriever type dog. You put on her and my kids think it's hysterical. It says that she's some type of like gorilla. And it's something that gets a laugh every time. But we go somewhere new. Um, we recently went to Lake Oswego and uh, may not be saying it right. Uh, we took the camera out and we just started shining it on plants in different places. And we learned what like the grasses were that grew near the lake. And I haven't found anything that doesn't really work in some degree. Now, it might not get all the way down to like genus and species, but it'll tell you like if it's like whatever's above that science class. Um, <laughs> but there are different there are different different digital platforms for whatever your kid is interested in. That they can find some type of app that can provide them with something that they can personally become rewarded. In. And some of the middle school students, I'm going to seek that out for them. I'm going to ask them to do some research on like apps, websites, um, people they could follow that would have the ideas that are closest to the goals that they want to set for themselves. So with that goes independence. Now, independence looks very different for second grade and for fifth grade. It looks, it looks very different from sixth grade to seventh grade. It looks different house to house. It looks different sibling to sibling. You can't just say, well, this is what you should do. It's so personal that not being with students, it's really hard for me to say, like, what's really good for a kid? One kid remembering plugs might be good. And if they can do it and they get a good job from home, it goes a long way. If they show up for class and I can give them feedback on something that I know they're doing, I'm sure that goes a long way too. But that independence, that idea of finding the internal reward for what's going on, congratulating them because maybe like a, um, maybe like a fourth or a fifth grader, they're able to log in by themselves, charge by themselves, make a lunch by themselves, or manage snacks through through them by themselves through the day. Like those are steps that all would help right now. So that's kind of a message that they're going to be getting in gym class. Like, well, what can you do right now? Can you get your laundry in a basket? Can you help take out the trash? Can you do something other than what you normally do? Please remind the students to do exercises um, outside of class time. I am 100% sure that they have some time on their hands. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot with the planks. All right, planks like I started doing with the classes, and you can't do them every single period of every single day at first. And then you get a little stronger. I'm going to talk about this this week in class, like how doing them each day. I was sore. I was tired. And I like got out of bed and I felt really old. And then there was a day where I could just do them. I, and it didn't matter if my son was on my back. It didn't matter if I did them for like a whole class period. And there's like a resilience in that that I'm going to talk about in some of my lessons coming up. So please remind them to do exercises. Um, they're going to have second through fifth grade will definitely have exercises each week that they can do. All right. My biggest takeaway so far as a participant, so I, I'm a consumer and I'm a supplier. Like I, I give lessons and I watch my children receive lessons. My biggest takeaway so far is that we had to really stick with it and be fair. We had to like set reasonable goals for our kid, our, our kids. Um, we really had to see like what they could do, what they couldn't do. And Maybe today this was the goal. And at the end of the day, we just talked about it and then set a new goal for the next day. And then it's Wednesday and the schedule's different. And then like you go to Thursday and you just keep set whatever is a reasonable goal and a reasonable like thing that you think your kid to, can achieve. That's what really worked for us. And communicating with students, that's what's worked for them. Like if they had reasonable things that they were trying to achieve each day. Uh, one size doesn't fit all. I can't tell you what will work in your house. Um, there is an element of this that's very individual. Um, if we were in school, curriculum in the school, online or remote, would match. They would be the same thing. 
but the way we do it will be different. Being home, trying to connect with each kid and each individual, like you know, I mentioned like magic tricks. I have to reach in deep for like very, very unique activities. And I'm trying to always find things that maybe somebody's into and it's a different topic this week. You know, whether it's card, magic tricks seem to be popular, but like could be card tricks next week. It could be learning to tie knots one week. It could be, I don't know, talking about like fishing. It could be something that I don't talk about now that when I talk about it, it maybe reaches a kid that it didn't really reach or I haven't reached yet. And that's kind of that variety of like what the main idea is. Um, so I'm going to skip a bunch of stuff and I'm just get right to the end of this because I think the most important thing we learned or in the house and what I've learned teaching my students is like no matter what the situation is, we try to make the best of what's around. I have every interruption imaginable at home. I have the same. If you If you work from home, I work from home. Kids are here. They have all kid issues. There's an Amazon guy my dog barks at. My dog comes over sometimes. 1.30 every Tuesday, they take out the recycling trucks and they clang them around and they dump the recycling out. And it interrupts class. We have all of the same interruptions. And in the spring, I deliver trees to many families. A lot of I had, I call them corn trees and my son wanted to dig them up and give them to his friends. So we spread them out all over the town. And uh, it was neat. It was a really neat thing. And after like two deliveries, my kids wanted to go home. It was just me delivering all these trees. And talking to parents that day, I kind of realized we all had similar stories. There was, I wasn't going somewhere and hearing something completely different from another house. Everybody kind of had the same story about what was going on in their house, how they didn't know they needed extra charging cords, how they didn't know they needed surge protectors, how they had to find places for kids to take school, just how they had more dishes now because everybody. So we all had the same issues. And we might have them now too. So make the best of whatever your situation is. I know that my students go off of me. They take keys from me in school. If we're in school, uh, for example, I share the gym with uh, the music program, uh, with sports, many other things. They come into the gym. And that moment they come into the gym and they say, uh, Mr. Glenda, we're using the gym today for whatever. I know that I have 20 learners looking at me. And if I get upset, I send one message to them. If I show that I'm really going to cooperate with the person, and I'm still going to try to make the best of the time I have with the students possible. It plays out very different in their attitude for class at that moment. And I always try to encourage in that moment, like I want to show them that I can share, I can cooperate, I can work with this other group of people that needs the same space. And I want to make sure that I emphasize like that is what worked for me. It worked for me when I just slowed everything down and said to my students, okay, well, yeah, yeah you need to go to the bathroom. Go ahead. You got it. You need five minutes. Go ahead. You got it. Ah, uh, there's a recycling truck over there. Hold on guys. I'm going to go on mute. Does anybody else want to take this over? And you have to find creative situations and solutions and activities that I never dreamed of this week. I'm eating hot peppers. Like I'm going to just do unique things. It'll be, con it'll be connected to a lesson for sure, but it'll be on a topic and it'll be related to what we're doing in some way. Um, that engages students and if your kids are engaged and they're like in class and they're talking about it i know i'm doing my my job i want them to talk about phys ed i want them to have like a little network in their head that they oh phys ed fun and they want to come to the gym and when they come they're ready to participate and they have their they show up and they have their water bottles or whatever is lift in that day and we get into the activity so I'm going to stop now. I've probably gone way over like the amount of time I said I would talk, but thank you very much for tuning in and thank you very much for the opportunity to work with your children.